welcome back to Tea with Fee, where we will chat about what's been going on this week and what crafty things that I've been up to and what my sewing ladies have been up to. So go grab yourself some drink of some sort and let's get going. Well, it's been another full on week at Make It So HQ. Um, first thing that I will give you an update on is how she's coming along. I feel like I need to give her a name. Um, progress is being made. Granted, it's slow progress. However, I am making progress. So I'm down to the final bit. I've started in here. I've got to just fill that little bit there in and then backstitch. And I know I said that last week, but this lady, the blue lady is now done. We've just got this little bit here to do. And as I've said in previous videos, at least I think I've said in previous videos, this is like my first cross stitch. So I was really unprepared for the amount of hours involved in doing one of these. Um, in some ways, it's quite a good thing because it means the next one I do is going to be a piece of cake because it's going to be a lot quicker. Um, yeah, so I've already got my next one lined up, which is from this book, Cross Stitch from the Heart and it's this cute little one be the reason someone smiles today so having done this one well almost almost finished this one which is use my little handy ruler that happens to be here seven and a half inches by at least 12 so this is seven and a half inches by at least 12 the new one finish is going to be six by nine so it's quite a bit smaller than this so it's going to feel a lot quicker um so it's not put me off doing this really big cross stitches my first one hasn't put me off necessarily um and i'm hoping that the next one's quicker because it's smaller but what i what i'm surprised about doing this one is i'm getting really fed up with the same colors I don't know if that's like a normal thing, um, but I'm getting really fed up with using the same colours all the time. So I'm hoping um, that this other one, which is more cheery bright colours, that the one I'm working on at the minute is pastely. Uh, I'm hoping that that will kind of like lift it up a level. So watch this space. When that new one happens in the grand scheme of things is another matter. So... I do have a confession to make. Let me put this away. So I said I wasn't going to make anything else until this was finished. That was my um, self-imposed rule. However, I realised very similar to when I did the Manx Log Cabin quilt last year. Um, so for anybody that's not watched that long um, I gave myself the task of finishing my Manx Log Cabin quilt last year um, and again the same thing can't make anything else till it's finished now it was a mammoth job and it was hours um, and I'd already started it so there was quite a lot already done um, however I needed to finish the squares I think there was like 115 squares that needed to be hand sewn and then I'm machine stitched all the squares together but I had set myself this goal that I wasn't going to do anything else anyway I just took the fun out of making it I just lost the love for it so I allowed myself to make some other things and then came back to it again later in the year more like engaged in it and got it finished by the deadline I had set myself which was mid-November I'd finished it by October and it was on the bed by October so I achieved my target but just focusing on that one project just wasn't working for me and I've realized the same thing with this one I kind of just needed a quick win do you ever feel that you just need a quick win to just get you sort of motivated again so that's when I decided um I had to make this jumper so if I give you a little so this is the jumper that I made now the reason this was a quick win is because I had cut out all the pieces already before Christmas and they literally just needed to be overlocked and the right thread was in the overlocker and everything so literally I just needed to 
sew it up. I haven't top stitched it or anything, so it's literally all overlocked. Um, and I sewed it up in maybe two hours. I, I didn't really time it, but I just knew that I could then tick something off my list of things to do and it would give me the motivation and the incentive to then get back on to finishing this one. So I haven't filled this in yet, so I think I might do that just now um, so that I can actually tick something off. So let's get that done and then I'll tell you what's been going on with the sores this week. Right, so this is the planner for this year. And I don't know if you remember me saying that I had decided that I was going to start a fresh one for this year. Um, so I hadn't finished last year's and there were still pages left in it, but I just decided that... I needed a fresh start, so I started a new planner, reviewed what was outstanding in planner 2022 and only transferred into this one the ones that I genuinely thought that I was going to get done or wanted to invest my time in this year. So this is the list. Um, the first, the top one here, Bet's Cross Stitch, is the lady that we're working on at the minute. And then I've got about six pairs of socks that need repaired and a pair in progress and then th these are all my in progress things and the red jumper is down here so the crochet um basket is done so it's on page eight and that means that the next free page for the red jumper is page 10 so if i just put in here page 10 And then red jumper. And the pattern is actually the hot chocolate by Team Waves and Wild. I think that's how you pronounce it. Now, I can't remember when I started or finished it. It's sometime in the last week. Uh, I need to obviously add a picture. Uh, would I make it again? Yes. Thoughts, lessons learned. Um, what did I learn? It It's a pretty quick make. So if you're looking for a quick win, um, this is quite a good project if you like doing um, clothes. So it was a pretty, pretty quick make and i can add my fabric on there and as you can see here i decided to go with different colored cuffs uh band and neckline and that's because the ribbon that i had the red ribbing that i had was not exactly the same color or red and it would have annoyed me that they weren't the same so i decided to just go completely different so there's not a lot in there is there um materials required so i literally just used um french terry and ribbing and it was probably only half a meter of that probably not even that i think that's what i bought and because i'm not particularly big it was only about one meter so that's done. I'm not going to need to use this page. I'll print a picture off, stick it in here and put a sample of the fabric in. Would I make it again? Yes, I would. I'll put a link of the pattern in the description. And I don't know how well you know me, but I do love my stationery. This is like my regular um, take everywhere <laughs> pencil case. Um, I might need to add a pencil case to the subscription boxes. For those of you that get subscription boxes, that don't be surprised if you see that coming up soon. Um, but I love my highlighters. I'm tried, I've been watching the bullet, I've read the bullet journal book, um, and I really like it. But it's I, I can't decide whether I like just the black and white, like just black ink, or whether I like the colour. So I'm really like conflicted about the whole thing. But the crochet basket is done. So that hadn't been highlighted. And the red jumper is done. 
And then we've got, what else? So repair the socks. I've got a jumper that's in progress. Now the Harmony blanket, that's an interesting one. The Harmony blanket actually started off as a blanket kit at 24. And then I made it into a coat again and I never wear it. So I'm actually going to unpick it and actually finish it off as a blanket. So that's in the progress. But I just don't know when I'm going to get to it. And then my not starter pile is I've got a pair. I've got a sock kit that I bought when I was in Norway. Norway I, I don't even know how many years ago. So that needs made. Um, the pattern is actually Norwegian. So I've had to translate it. Um, the fireside blanket, which quite a lot of people have been doing, which was an Attic 24. Borg blanket, which is insomnia, I think. Insomnia crochet. And again, I'm itching to get started on that. Then there's a cross stitch I was talking about a minute ago. And possibly a Christmas waistcoat, a red bikini and a Christmas dress. So they're the things that, that are on the list at the minute. I've got nothing on the gift list at the minute. I have some things in my head, but I'm not 100% sure yet before I put them in there. So there is a lot still to be done. Um, now, whether it all gets done this year or not, who knows. Um, but at least it gives me everything in one place. Um, that I can refer back to and then decide what I'm going to do next. So thank you for filling that in with me. Okay, so let's have a little chat about what's been happening in sewing lessons this week. So we have had um, Laura and Kaz were here on Tuesday and they are working on Laura is doing a second graduation bag, which is in amazing colours. Um, the fabric has been used in the kits that I have made over the last couple of months. It's really bright and colourful and um, she's working on that and it's going to look amazing when it's finished. Kaz is working on one of the boxes, which is the rucksack box, which is in this really nice, like... Um, green leaf fabric but it's like a rip cough so it's kind of waterproof so she's doing that at the minute and they're both coming along really nicely so i can't wait to see them as they progress and then we i was at joyce's on wednesday i was actually at joyce's on monday and wednesday this week so we've had a double session at joyce's so she's been working me hard cracking the whip she's currently making she's got two She's got, well, she's probably got about 15 projects on the go, to be honest. Um, but the ones that I'm currently helping with are two separate quilts. So we were working on those in the last couple of days. Um, and they are continued. They We will be continuing them next week. I don't have any pictures of those, though, unfortunately. Um, and then Thursday morning, we have got Charlotte and Nikki. And they are working on graduation Nikki's working on the graduation bag, which is her first graduation bag. And for anybody that comes to my um, Sew Like a Pro lessons, you can't graduate till you've made the graduation bag. And then you get a certificate to say that you have successfully completed the Sew Like a Pro program. Um, so Nikki is currently working on that at the minute. And Charlotte is gone rogue and she is working on a fabulous denim skirt that she's making out of off cuts of denim and it's like a brick effect and she is just working on that so she was putting the darts in that and just got a waistband to put on and she's going to bind the bottom rather than turn the bottom up whereas the previous one she left raw i think she's made two so that was coming along really nicely and she also again needed a bit of a quick win so she decided with some fabric that she already had that she wanted to use it to make a cushion. So she started cutting out the bits and got the two from the front and the back made up. Um, and she just wants to applique that. So that's as far as she could get with that. But again, a lot of progress was made. So that will be finished next week at the latest. And that will feel like a quick win for her because the previous project that she was working on was quite a significant length of time. And we all need a quick win. I know I said that earlier, but we all do need a quick win every now and again just to make us feel like we've actually ticked something off. Um, alternatively, if you're determined you want to just stick to one project, then I would recommend you break that project down into smaller pieces. 
and then you can tick those pieces off as you do them and it'll make you feel like you're actually like working your way through it so if you really want to just focus on one thing and get it done that's how i would do that's how i would what i would recommend um so yeah so that was thursday then crafting and tea on thursday afternoon which is always a joy um i was getting carpets fitted on thursday in the house so it was a little bit late to crafting tea however um i was there long enough to get some of the the blue lady done um so i do feel like it was worth going even if it wasn't for the full length of time um and then it's just a case of getting everything put back together again so i don't know if anybody's ever had carpets fitted um when you're already living in the house i'm sure you have um but we were getting the living room the downstairs hall up the stairs the staircase and then the, the landing at the top of the stairs were all getting carpeted so all the knickknacks and stuff within the the hall and the living room all needed to go somewhere so it was a bit of a nightmare but the carpets look lovely so that's the whole that's the main thing um thursday night's sewing was the lovely wendy um and then friday we've got alwyn and christine um so that's my sewing schedule i'll let uh, you know um, anyway, so crafting and tea is on this Saturday, so I just wanted to remind everybody of that. So I look forward to seeing everybody that can make it on Saturday. If you've not been before, we would love to see you. 10 to 12 at Union Mills Methodist Church. And you can have a cup of tea and a biscuit, bring your craft with you and just chat to other people that like the same things that you do. So what's not to like about that? Um, so yeah, we would love to see you there. Um, and that's it in terms of the week's um, events. In terms of the um, memory bear side of the business, I have been, I did the llama and you might have seen a video of the llama being made. So it's been rehoused um, and it was lovely. And I'm now currently working on some memory cushions and this month's box has been distributed and the pattern has been released and the video on how to make the pattern has been released and I now need to add to the website the previous month's pattern so I haven't done that yet so my accountability task for the week to come is to finish the cross stitch crosses at least and get the pattern uploaded on the website for and the box for last month and last month I don't have a picture of I don't have the actual thing here but last month it was oh it was where is it i don't know where it is it was a cushion um that was really weird um so yeah it was a cushion the the, the this oh no this month was a cushion last month was a draft excluder so the one that's going to be available on the website that now is the draft excluder and the cushion um will go on at the beginning of april because that's the current box pattern so that's what's been happening in my world this week and it's all very confusing and just a bit chaotic really um but the other thing that i wanted to do today whilst we are together if you don't mind is Something that I've been wanting to do for ages and just haven't got round to. So after doing the taking the trousers up last week, I thought, oh, that could be the perfect opportunity to get another little bit of sewing done. Um, so I have got, I've been towel shopping. What a boring thing to spend money on. Um, so I've got some new towels and the old ones, rather than just binning the old ones, so you get your towels end up like this. Um, I'm going to use the towel to make um, washable, um, what do you call it? Paper towels. So I'm going to use this to make paper towels, basically. So I thought we could do that together. So I have got, the plan is, I've got these cute fabric squares, which are 10 inch squares and i've actually got two packets of these so if anybody wants any let me know but i've only literally got two packets i think you get 40 squares in a packet 
um they're 10 inch squares and it's like a farm kind of scene so there's those two are the same in different colors and then there's the nice little pattern and then i've got some chickens a pheasant possibly that's a sheep and then i've got another one of these in a different color and then i've got the chickens again in the same color so i might not do the chicken again because i don't really need two the same so if we forget about the chickeny one we've got one two three four five six i've got seven and there should be enough towel to make seven um reusable paper towels so what i am going to do is to make life dead easy i have this ruler which is nine and a half inches which is not quite this size but it's close enough i'm going to cut seven squares out using this ruler then i'm going to sew them together and i'm going to have seven reusable paper towels now at this point i am not going to make them join together um because i'm not quite sure what option to go with um I don't think I've got enough poppery things to do them, so that's not an option. I've probably got some Velcro, but not handy. Um, so that's a possible option, but again, it's not going to be a quick fix. Um, or I could do buttonholes and buttons, so that's an option. Um, but again, I'm not quite sure. So at this moment in time, phase one is just to get them into usable squares. So I'm going to go and cut this out and then we're going to sew them together, together. We're going to sew them together, together. Okay, so I've cut out two. What is going on? going on today i've cut out three i figured you don't need to see me doing all seven so i've cut out three you probably don't need to see me doing all three to be honest right so this is the plan we've got the old towel square we've got the fabric square right sides together and because my fabric square is slightly bigger than the um, towel square, put the towel square on the top so that you can see where you're sewing. And I'm literally just going to sew all the way around, leave a hole in the middle to, not in the middle, in the middle of a side, to turn it through and then turn it through. So that's what we're going to do now. So I'm just going to pin it together. And what I like to do as a little tip, if anybody's interested in a little tip, is I will show you so that I know where my turning hole is. Because there's quite often when you're sewing, you need a turning hole for, especially with bags and things like that. I indicate where. Um, the hole should be with like two double pins so if there's two there's a double pin together it makes me stop and think right why have i put two pins together and then i realize that it's so that i leave this gap so that's what i'm going to do so i'll do that with the three of them so that was the nice flowery fabric let's go with this one and again, the same idea. So if anybody else has made these already, I would love to know um, if you have used um, old towels to make paper towel, what method did you use? That would be really useful. Um, how do you keep them together? Or do you just have them stacked somewhere? Like, you know, in one of those napkin things? Um, or do you just treat them put them in the cloth drawer with the rest of the cloth and you just use them for mopping up spills and um, that'd be quite useful but I'd like to know anybody that's made them do you go poppers buttons um velcro or some other alternative fastening that I've not thought of 
Um, I'm sure there's probably some. It is. You could zip them together. Um, right, that's two done. So yeah, what is your way of making the reusable paper towels? And the other thing that I would be quite intrigued to know is, like, on the sort of reusing front is, does anybody else cut up their towels and use them for whether it be cleaning cloths or, uh, or do you just basically put them in the charity shop or recycling? Um, what's everybody's kind of take on that? Um, oh, that was close. What spot the deliberate mistake on this one? So I'm pinning this together. Can you see what I did wrong there? They're not wrong sides together. Well spotted, Fiona. Okay, let's redo that one. That would have been a little bit embarrassing, wouldn't it? That's what happens when you're trying to do two things at once. Right, okay, let's try that again. Pin this one. And I'm not saying we're going to get all three of these done whilst we're chatting. Uh, I don't know whether that's realistic or not, but we'll definitely get one done. And then I will maybe make this part of my weekend to-do list. Get the rest, the other six. Well, if I get one done with you, I've got six more to do. Okay, right. I've pinned that together the right way this time. I'm going to get the sewing machine set up and then we're going to sew those together. Okay, so machine is set up. I'm ready to sew. Let's get ready to sew. Uh, I'm literally going to do it on about a quarter to half an inch seam allowance. My stitch length is 2.5 millimetres. And I'm literally going to start where my double pins are and end where my double pins are. Okay. And because I'm doing it with the um, toweling on the top, which is smaller, I can see where I'm going and know that I'm not going to worry about um, sewing off the end. And reversing at the start and the end, because if you don't do that, it might um, unravel. So... I've got a setting on my machine that does that automatically. I don't need to press the reverse button, which is quite handy. Um, I can't remember if when I was doing this last week, I did it on the loan machine or whether it was on my own machine. Uh, but I'm back to my own machine today and I'm much happier. Um, it's just what you're used to, isn't it? So we're just going to sew all the way around. Uh, you can't see from here. I, it's not ideal. I'm just doing pivot turns on each corner. So a pivot turn is when you leave the needle in, lift the foot up and then turn the fabric and then put it, put the foot back down and keep going. So you're sewing a continuous row of stitches or a line of stitches. Well, no, it's not a line because it's got turns in it, but you get the idea. So, so all the way around. Get me trusty pin cushion. One of my favourite things, the pin cushion, from the patterns that we made. It's available on my website if you've not already made one, and it's quite good because it actually doubles up as a paper, um, a pattern weight because it's quite heavy. Um, and I really like the fact that because it's quite thick, the pins don't stick out the bottom like they do in some other ones. Right, so I have stitched all the way round this one. I'm just going to take the pins out now. And then we're going to give it a little trim. So I'm just going to trim, and it's quite important to trim the corners. So see where the stitches line up there? If you cut the corner off 45 degrees, it means when it's all tucked in, you get a pointier corner. So let me just get a pair of scissors. These are great, these little snips. For scars, um, if you've not got these already, I definitely recommend these. Along with, you might have seen um, in the cutting out 
bit of the video um i used like the big brother version of these which are for cutting fabric these are more just for snipping and doing small jobs um but the bigger spring loaded ones are really good especially if you've got issues with like your wrist and your grip um they are really good okay so i need to find the turning hole now which is here it's not exactly a big turning hole um so let's keep our fingers crossed that it's gonna work don't when you cut in the corners on the diagonal don't cut them too close to the stitches because if you cut too close to the stitches and you snip the thread then it'll unravel so you'll need to go back and then sew it again and we don't want to do that if we can avoid it so this one is nearly it's nearly there i'm not going to do the other two because you'll get the general idea from this one um I'm still trying to think how I'm going to store them. So I've had the idea to do these for ages. I just haven't really followed it through with how am I going to put them together? Where am I going to put them in the kitchen? But equally, I didn't want to just... The towel wasn't good enough to go to a charity shop. But equally, it wasn't really ready for the bin. Um, So... And people make these all the time, so I might just need to see if I can, might need to buy some poppers. I think that might be what happens. I'm getting, I'm getting bored with this now. It will go, it will go. Oh, here we go. You always think it's not going to go and then just suddenly it just works. It's like magic. Oh, isn't that nice? Now, what everybody needs in their sewing kit, um, which I don't know whether I've mentioned before, but no serious sewer should be without a chopstick in their sewing kit because it's great for poking the corners. Ta -da! Right, so we now have... Our square and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to top stitch all the way around and that will then catch that hole um so because you need to catch that I would do your seam allowance a half an inch rather than a quarter of an inch because it gives you more to fold it in and I'm just putting a pin in um on each side to keep it folded in um, and then I'm just going to sew around it again. When I sew around it this time, I'm going to make my stitch length bigger because it's it's more just to finish it off. So let's do... Um, because my machine moves the needle from left to right, I'm going to move the needle and then that makes it easier for me. I'm not having to um, do the concentrating bit. Which is quite difficult when you're trying to chat at the same time. And so, um, and I'm pretty good at multitasking. I like to think that I am. Um, but you can see from before, mistakes are quite easily made. So I'm making my stitch length three. And again, not everybody's machines have got the same um, measurement for things like stitch length. Um, some of them have just got a dial and it's like you, you set a different pattern and each pattern has got a, a, a longer or shorter stitch length. So it just depends on what your machine is like. But my stitch length is probably the middle one. So whatever you've got on your machine, I'm now doing the middle. The middle size stitch. So and again, just pivot corners again. And then it might get stuck on the corners because there's a lot in the inside. So you might just need to help it on its on its way a little bit. We're on. I think we're on the last bit. Oh no, not quite. And if you wanted, you could quilt it. Uh, but I'm, I might do a, I might do a cross. We'll 
see. I might do a cross on this one and see. I might do a cross on this one and see what I think. but that really did not take long did it so if anybody's looking for a quick job to do this weekend make yourself some of these that took no like no time so if you leave it like this the only thing i would say is you can go like this with your two layers which might be fine but if you don't like the fact that that separates like that then you can just sew across in and that will stop it doing that. So, that's it. Thank you for watching Tea Booth Fee. Just to recap, Crafting and Tea is on on Saturday at 10 to 12. So, if you are, um, if you live in the Isle of Man, then please feel free to come along and um, meet us all. 10 to 12, Union Mills Methodist Church. Uh, you'll get a cup of tea, a biscuit, and just get to chat to other people that enjoy crafting. Um, if you are interested in sewing boxes or having a project box which is a full kit sent to your house so you don't even need to go to the fabric shop although i do realize that going to the fabric shop is not necessarily a chore um however sometimes we don't have time so you can actually order project boxes that can be posted direct to your door and literally you just need to sit at your machine um, well, not technically just sit at your machine, you need to cut out the pieces. Um, but all the stuff is in the box to make the pattern. You just need to sit and have a cup of tea and make it and just enjoy some time sewing and just use it as a little bit of like mindfulness and like build yourself up and make sure that you're putting yourself as a priority because we're not very good at that, are we? We quite often... Um, put ourselves in the bottom of the pecking order and put other people's needs before ours but we can't actually be there for other people if we're not looking after ourselves first so my top tip for you today is try and get some quality time on your own doing something that you love whether that be crafting going for a walk just sitting having a cup of tea reading a book whatever it is make time for it this weekend um Oh, thank you for watching. Hope you have an absolutely fantastic weekend and I will see you next week on Tea with Fee. Thank you. Bye.